Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Today for Shoe Talks Quarantine Edition, we're gonna have Cesar Idrobo. I, I just know him as Sid Robo, just because I follow him on Instagram for a long time. Um, he is an apprentice with Marcel, he used to be, um, and uh, Skad Alum, and I think I found his Instagram when he was in school there. And now he's all the way on the West Coast. So we'll call him in and see how he is doing. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna put the title, pin the title, and let's see. Yes. Adding him right now. Hello. Hi, Hi Cesar. How okay. are you? Good. Can you hear me? Good. Yeah. How's everything going during quarantine? I think LA, Cali, Cali area is um, still in quarantine. Are you back at work? How have you been able to kind of get through this three, four months? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, we have, uh, you know, uh, been creative mm -hmm. about how to still get work done. Mm -hmm. And so we have still, you know, we keep things moving and mm -hmm. you know keeping things smooth yeah despite you, of despite of what you, happens did you have a studio at home where you can work at home or from uh, home i i did not uh, but after a while you know under safe circumstances i was able to to come back and still you know continue my work that's so great did mm -hmm. you, I, I just heard right before that uh, you flew, did you fly or did you, how did mm -hmm. you travel? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we fly commercial, you know. Yeah. And you're okay. Good, I'm good. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad you're healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, for the people who don't know, can you introduce yourself, what you do, where you are? Yeah. And then, let's, no, and so... then from there, we'll go back in time. Okay. Yeah, no, so my... Everything started with with my ca academic studies at SCAD, uh, with my bachelor's in industrial design, and then later on, a couple of years later, a couple of years after, decided to pursue my graduate studies in accessory design at SCAD. Uh, the reason why I decided to do that is because in my senior year of industrial design, I did an accessory design related project. Mm -hmm. which is what uh, really caught my interest in, in this field of, you know, soft goods, footwear, mm -hmm. bags. And the, the graduate studies at SCAD was really a good decision because they, they, at that time, they were the only school that offered graduate studies in accessory design. Mm -hmm. So for me, it just made sense to, mm -hmm. to do that. And also at that time, Marcel Marchan was part of the program, mm -hmm. which was one of the reasons why I decided to pursue that mm -hmm. as well. And SCAD offered like, you know, great facilities, great tools, great space. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like a, yeah, a combination of right things that, that I decided, yeah, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they nurtured, they nurtured me really well to, mm -hmm. you know, to become the professional I am today. And, you know, uh, Part of that is the great education from, you know, Marcel, uh, Michelle, and yeah, great staff. And That's yeah, great. Here and I you, am. Mm -hmm. you, you always wanted to do footwear? I did or? not. Uh, it took a while to, to, to really uh, grow into the craft of, of making shoes. Uh, at the beginning, I wanted just to um, uh, uh, be concentrated in bags mm -hmm. but then as I started getting better and better at shoemaking mm -hmm. uh, I just decided to you know let's let's move forward with shoes mm -hmm. and which that led me to my first full-time job at Adidas mm -hmm. uh, that was three three years ago uh-huh what did you uh, do I was a footwear developer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and then, how much yeah and then tell us Oh, no, no. Then, like, I freelance for a year, 
and then this came into the the job I have right now with West Brands came into the picture. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Somebody asked, "Are you in Wyoming right now?" Yes. Mm, yes. <laughs> We can't show you really, but um, the background and stuff. But I, so how much of the sh traditional shoemaking experience do you use on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Right now, it seems like the shoes that you're creating is more digitally designed. No, the process is still very hands-on. Oh, cool. And the advantage of me knowing how to make shoes by hand is that I don't require much, uh, you know, machinery. Neither I depend on people to mm -hmm. to to make shoes make because shoes for you, yeah. Right, because at a corporation, Adidas, Nike, uh, each each there is a person for each step. Yeah. So there is a person just for sewing, a person just for gluing, a person just for cutting, and then even, you have to right even. Work with them. Right, right. Even so you if you have be... a sample room, which is like a great asset that the company has. Right. It, in your case, you can do it all, mm -hmm. even without asking them. Right. In a way. And mm -hmm. the advantage of me is that I can work for as long as I want. Mm -hmm. So I can have something done by the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> like 24 hour like crunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Versus at a sample room. You could be looking at, depending on the complexity of the design, you could be looking at a week, you could be looking at a two weeks, months. Right. Uh, but yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's very cool. So um, we went a little bit back in time and then, um, oh, I think I cut you off on like, you, are you interested in shoes always? Like you oh. said you went back into, you were interested in bags at first? Yes, Sorry. but then, yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. at SCAD, you had the choice to do uh, half shoes, half uh, bags for a collection. Mm. So I always kept that uh, flexibility of doing both because mm -hmm. I wanted to get decent at both. Mm -hmm. But then towards the end, I just decided to do like just all shoes. Mm. And uh, going into apprenticeship with Marcel, it was a steel shoes. Yeah. So I just moved forward with shoes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. The red, the I actually posted uh, the red series. It's all red. Is that mm -hmm. your graduate program? That yeah, that was my last collection. Yes, last collection. Oh, cool. Um, so your journey is like from making traditional shoes all the way to, and from the industrial design background, you also do like three D modeling and all this, or. No, how, no, no. Mm. my emphasis hasn't been on 3D because mm. if I become good at 3D, mm. then people are just going to come to me for 3D, not for shoes. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So you have to be very careful. Just in general, in any creative field, you have to be very careful how you're good at because right. that's what people are going to come to you for. Right. If you're the best at organizing folders... That's what you're going to be doing at a job, organizing folders. Yeah. So, plus that's, plus the, 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 the scope of my uh, like job description mm -hmm. is shoemaking, not 3D model. Oh, I see. So do you have like a team, work, team of people you work with and you kind yeah, of do we, the we physical? Have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have other, uh, you know, staff and uh, other people that handle that when it's needed. Mm -hmm. uh, but for first iteration, like a new conceptual, mm -hmm. new conceptual work, that's on me. Mm, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So any concepts that you've developed that's out in the market at the moment? Mm, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Good to know. Well, when it's out, you know, I hope you do a little shout out. <laughs> um, so in your trade, mm -hmm. what tool do you think is essential other than like your hands and your brain? Oh, I really, I really like, well, to, tools wise, I really tool. like mm -hmm. the lasting pincers because mm -hmm. they're very versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, machinery wise, I, mm -hmm. I think the finisher. Finisher. Okay, the finisher okay. is that I must have 
mm-hmm. just for any even if you're a footwear designer you should get a tool that you're able to shape yeah uh, and send because shape is so important and mm-hmm. yeah the finisher i love the finisher the finisher is like my one of my favorite steps in the process mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Using the gr- even grinding down some shoes that's already complete kind of mm-hmm. do, you, do you do that at current work Hold no, on. really. It's more like like creating things, like creating the ingredients for a shoe from the scratch. From scratch, got it. Got so it, got the it. finisher allows me to shape. Right. Uh, yeah, like give give shape to my ideas. Very cool. So I, I'm asking all these d- questions that overlap and stuff. Yeah, of course. So yeah, and then so I know you can't talk much about your work. Your work but are there any projects personal projects that you're working on that's like shoe related no nothing at the moment yeah you just don't have enough time it seems like yeah that's one yeah yeah and then also i guess you work on shoes all day you don't go home to work on more shoes right maybe <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite process of a shoe designing and shoe making mm. I like mm, I like the process of gluing mm. because in the gluing process, uh, I think that's when you see things coming together. Uh huh. But also, there is like a small window for you mm-hmm. to to dictate the shape of the shoe. Still, like you can uh, have some uh, say in how forward, you know, you can mm-hmm. play with the silhouette of the shoe in the gluing mm-hmm. process. Hmm. Um, and yeah, it's just fascinating seeing things coming together. I think mm-hmm. that has to do with me playing with Legos when I was a kid. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When you start putting things together. Together. Uh-huh. Uh, there is like a joy. That yeah. like, oh, wow, this is it. Like this coming together is like, yeah. So I think I like, I like gluing. Got it. Somebody asks, which is your favorite silhouette you've worked on? Either on your own, on your projects, or um, I guess at work? Uh, in in school, there was a style that I really liked that I became good at. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was um, the stitch down boot mm-hmm. construction, the chocolate mm-hmm. boot stitch mm-hmm. down. That was, that was a style that I, uh, I became decent at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think especially I like the the step of stitching the upper to the midsole, well yeah. to the to the piece of vest then that then goes yeah. into the midsole. I enjoy that step a lot, mm-hmm. and and it was yeah it was like well at that time to me in the beginning of this process it was like fascinating. Mm-hmm. Just every every style of shoes is a different world. Yeah. So yeah, the stitch down was one of those worlds that I really enjoy spending time. Very cool. Cameron Wilder asks, any favorite sneaker spots in Savannah? There is actually yes, there is one spot in Savannah. It used, is well, is where uh, Mar Jacobs used to be across the street. There is like a skate shop. Uh-huh. And they carry some interesting things there. I remember uh-huh. shopping there once for for a pair of Asics. Okay. Uh, yeah, across the street from my Jacob. Yeah, sounds good. I have mm-hmm. a few questions, but I feel like I don't want to ask questions that's going to put him in the spot where mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> or in trouble or anything. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask some other questions. Do you have a mo- motto, mantra you live by? Uh... Like, how do you get through, like, not your day, but, like, how do you keep super motivated? How do you put in that grind? Like, you said 24 hours. Not 24 hours, but, like, sometimes you put in so many hours. Right. All in Uh, one with your passion. What I can think of is, like, there are moments where, it's like moments where, like, you think, like, damn, like, Am I going to be able to meet the deadline? Am I going to be able to deliver? I think 
it, it would be insightful just to share what I think in those moments. I just decide to keep going. Keep going. Your yeah, keep ma going. Mantras, keep going. <laughs> yeah, because in the process, that's also the advantage of uh -huh. me being able to make shoes. Sometimes when you look at a design, you can shut it down from the beginning. Right. But even though if it might seem difficult at the beginning, I always think that I can make it work in the process of making it. Right, 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 right. Very cool. So, yeah. That's what I think about when I'm like in a, you know, in crunch time. It's like what I have, what I have been asked to do might be hard slash impossible, but I'm going to make it work in the process of doing it. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite shoe of all time? Oh, all time? It can be somebody else's shoe, yeah. but also your own. Yeah. No, I... I'm a fan of Puma. I like uh -huh. Puma. Puma has good stuff, especially like early 2000s Puma. Uh huh. They were pretty. They have an edge and very forward thinking. Uh -huh. uh, this uh Puma K1. Mm -hmm. The cheese, like they call it the cheese, cheesy Pumas or che something like that. Cheese Puma. Uh huh. Well, no, Swiss cheese, something like that. Swiss cheese Puma. It's like a green, a yellow heel with holes, uh -huh. and but uh -huh. it's one piece. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. That's funny. That I, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, all, the sneaker world is such a small world, but you know, but it's great. It's good. Mm -hmm. Um, someone asks, uh, wait, why city? Why cities are leaders in product sourcing? I'm not sure. Do you think so? Sorry, I'm reading the question yeah, because it keeps on coming, and I'm like trying to focus on you, but there's like a lot of words going on. Uh, okay. Do you think there's some noticeable differences from the sample you worked at the studio and then the end mass produced shoes? Yes. Yes. I mean, just like in everything, uh, once things go into production, you have to make them production friendly. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, you know, it's the nature of, of the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you get to design or do you have a team of designers that you work with to kind um, of get I, the concept yeah. into yeah. an actual product? Yeah, there is a team of designers. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I do design sometimes. Mm -hmm. Whenever it's needed, I, I uh, put my designer's hat on. So, yeah, it's, you know, if it's needed, yes, I'll design, but uh, I spend my energy on making. Right. There's some questions that somebody, there's a multiple actually mm -hmm. about, do you like working there? Of course. Yes. And someone says, what is it like? I guess we're kind of gearing that way. So I'll pull you back again yeah. to making, but. <laughs> okay. Uh, roller coaster. Roller coaster. <laughs> Makes sense. But you enjoy it. Yeah. Who doesn't love roller coasters? Yeah. And every day is different. Yep. And every shoe is different, which I'm sure like makers all you yeah. don't know and the challenges that comes with like patterning and everything. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite material to work with? Do you work with traditional materials or do you like working with a new material? Um, both. I work with both like, you know, stuff that is, uh, uh, how can I say like, yeah, traditional, but also I'm always open to try new things. Mm -hmm. What kind of tool, what kind of, yeah. um, how some people has somebody, Shiv, sorry, Shiv Persad asks, how do you produce your prototypes? So do you do everything from say, what kind of materials do you use? Do you kind of, can you kind of talk through the process? I mean, pretty similar to, I mean, traditional footwear making like, the mm -hmm. the steps and the approach and the yeah the steps and the approach doesn't change what changes is how you do it mm -hmm. and when you depends on on how you handle those steps in the process but like it's I I wouldn't call it like it's not too far off. Mm. Uh, just, just, you're just changing the outcome, I guess. 
Mm. So yeah. for example, like, sorry, for some, you know, just to kind of go over. So you would like from a designer sketch, you would create a pattern, maybe yeah, yeah, uh, same, on process. A, same process yeah. with a last. Mm -hmm. Do you do you modify last to kind of make the shapes uh, that you want? No. or No, no. So uh, no, I don't do that. No, no. No. And then you, do you make the patterns as well for the first yes, photos? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And then do you use leather for sampling? Uh, no, not really. No? No, not really. Mm -hmm. Rarely, very rarely. Very rarely. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things, do you use like a 3D printer? Do you also print out things? Do um, you... It depends. Uh, it depends. No, mainly, mainly it's like I do it from from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, those steps is for uh, when things are like more defined. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we tap into those resources, but uh -huh. no, the 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 process is yeah, it's very like hands on and very mm -hmm. yeah, very hands on. So if something is really sculptural, do you build it like with like say foam or carve something or um, what do you do? No, I no EVA like I mean EVA. What we, yeah what we use in shoemaking. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm saying that the traditional ways and what I'm doing right now it's is is not far off. So okay, that's that's the value and that's the value I've seen in you know learning the proper way, learning. The proper techniques because once you learn that then you can adapt uh, yeah. adjust yeah uh, those steps to your process to your yeah process. yeah um, no, but you must sense. first yeah you must first learn the traditional right. way right mm -hmm. okay okay cool and aside from shoes somebody asked what products do you like working on the most mm, i i don't have a specific style or like product i just enjoy the creation process mm -hmm. so i enjoy the you know just in general the mm -hmm. the transition from a sketch to a to a physical mm -hmm. product it's it's rewarding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 if you had unlimited time and the money in the world just for yourself not for any company <laughs> what would you make and for who uh just i would just say uh, look at the whole experience of, of footwear like including a you know how the shoe is marketed how the shoe is sold mm -hmm. packaging like a, i would yeah i would look at a holistic like a holistic like big picture thing yeah and yeah that i think that could be very very cool to think about yeah yeah mm -hmm. would you make would you make shoes for yourself of course yeah mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if you've done anything differently during the pandemic, but after the pandemic, I don't know, once it settles, what do you think you would do differently for your work or personally? Oh, uh, I mean, nothing has, I mean, nothing has really changed for me work-wise or like mm -hmm. process-wise. Mm -hmm. Uh... I guess you could look at things in terms of like evaluating, you know, a workflow that w that is flexible enough mm -hmm. that in case of something happening, you can, you know, you can take things with you or, mm -hmm. you know, just looking at ways to keep things going no matter what happens. Right, right. And do you feel like you're just safe because six feet apart is plenty? Do you have enough plenty of space? Or... Well, I, I feel safe because I don't have to depend on China. Right, right. So, That's key. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. And it's all your hands and your yeah. tools and yeah. supply. And yeah. Still, you know, the accuracy, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost there. Yeah. You still get, oh. you know, similar results from, a, from what uh -huh. I do to what you get from China. Yeah. So it's awesome. In less time. Yeah. So it's just like no brain. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah. Thomas Benjamin Designs asks, what advice do you have for students beginning a senior thesis project? I mean, 
right now it's almost also hard because they're mm -hmm. not at school. I don't think they have access to school studio. Right. But. Uh, well, I will try to do like, you know, make the best effort to to bring to life your vision, whatever you point you're trying to make is, you know, make it, uh, make it happen in real life because otherwise it will just be a thesis, it will just be another design, another thing, you know, another rendering. Mm. Uh, which is, you know, it's, if that's part of the project brief, it's fine. Mm. But I think if you want to think, take things to the next level, I think you have to make the effort to, to make them happen. Like physically, like. Yeah, physically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so even if they, I guess now some vendors are open, so you can order materials ahead. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some yeah, vendors yeah. are open, and yeah. you could also look into, you know, taking things apart, modifying, cutting, mm -hmm. buff. I mean, Home Depot is open. They have, like, tools that yeah. could work. Yeah. Uh, that's an yeah. option. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just think also like, you know, think about that it's at the end of the day, it's about communicating ideas mm -hmm. and not making works of art. I think that could be a misconception is that people think mm -hmm. like, oh, I ha it has to be perfect. Not mm -hmm. really. It just has to be, it just has to communicate your vision. Right. And that goes with both designers as well as makers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another question, do you, uh, sorry, do you have some advice that can be applied to your personal work from the experience of working on a top-end company with other designers? Wait, hold on. Do you, sorry. Do you take some advice that can be applied to your personal work from the experience of working on a top-end company with other designers? So what you're learning during work, do you bring it and apply it to your personal work at all? Mm, yeah, of course, it affects me, you know, it affects you, mm -hmm. how you operate, how you think, and then your confidence, it affects your confidence. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And the, all those things are connected. So yeah, it, there is a, do, there is an do, influence. Mm -hmm. Do you number your creations? Say like a prototype one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Version, you... Yeah, when I'm doing versions of the same design, yes. Yeah. Just so I can you know, just categorize. Right. But even the process, do you kind of know how much you've made so far in the, your career there? Yes, I have a pretty good idea. Number wise. About how, how many is that? Many, <laughs> many, many. Okay. Okay. Another one. Any suggestions for designers or makers trying to enter the industry during this time of uncertainty, especially as many companies aren't hiring? That's a hard one. I mean, if you have any kind of words of wisdom. Yeah. Well, I, I can relate to that because even during no pandemic, people still struggle finding a job. So mm. I can relate to that because it took me a year a year and a half almost to to land full time again mm -hmm. but by the, by default you should you know you should be a freelancer mm -hmm. and you know do do us you know do do work jobs that are project based i think also give the companies option to do project based work i think mm -hmm. some people are open to that rather than like oh we have to bring someone full time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think so go, go freelance yeah, go freelance and give people the option like, hey, I'm open to projects mm -hmm. or like a time period contract thing. Or, yeah, give give people the flexibility and mm -hmm. also be open to, you have to be open to other jobs. I did, I did graphic design at Nike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was not really what you initially wanted to do. Mm, not really, but like, I was like, well, I can use Illustrator. Yeah. So I think that's where like industrial design came in handy. Yeah. But yeah, just like knowing, having, you know, principles of design, Illustrator, uh, having a sensitivity for color and like, you mm -hmm. know, shapes, lines. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I think that helped me. That gives you like a more of a broad, a broad, uh, cho- more more choices. Gives you more mm-hmm. choices. So yeah, I mean, be open to to any job. You know, yeah. whatever it takes. Yeah, it'll. Yeah, great, great advice. Um, I'm working. Someone says I can't read the username. I'm Raj Dave zero zero seven. I am working on my PMP project management. What other technical skills can I learn? From the project management standpoint. Project management standpoint. Um, I guess mm-hmm. what I'm thinking with, well, I hope this answers the question. What I'm trying to think is, him becoming familiar mm-hmm. with the process of, of you know, just fullware making or fullware manufacturing and look at the timelines, you know, how long it takes to do this and that and go from there. Do you have any personal projects with you at the moment or not really? I'm like, is there anything you can no, show us? Not really. Not I mean, really. everything everything I can show us in, at the bottom or my Instagram, Yeah. which is like my school work. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, I, I share my school work, which it was one of the things that helped my, you know, expose people and, and Instagram to behind the scenes of the journey of learning how to make shoes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, everything is there. Yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, um, I know you were saying that you don't really work on personal projects, but do people come and ask you like, oh, you know, can you make me a pair of say some style from oh. your o- old, you know, your graduate pro- pro- um, collection, for example? If someone mm-hmm. comes to you asking, like, can you make me that style yeah. that you did, would you make uh, it? I, yeah, I would be open to do it. Uh, yeah, I would be open to do it. But no, I, I haven't come with those. Those requests haven't come to me lately or often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess also you're really busy. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want to be in three to five years? Uh, well, hopefully more doing more of the same. Yeah, doing more Pro- of the thing. Pro- prototyping. Product- prototyping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. And when prototyping goes into production is also another exciting step. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing like when it comes out. I know I'm sure you have something where you can't really talk about it when even when it comes out. But <laughs> I hope you can kind of mention point point it to point um all the viewers towards a product that you've worked on just to be like i did that <laughs> <laughs> but i know your pro- your instagram is private so not so many people can really see you um and do you feel like you would ever go back to making traditional shoes or um bespoke shoes like oh. hand welded yeah, I'm open to it. I'm open to, you know, just going back to uh, the traditional methods. Because there, there is still a lot to learn. Mm. And besides learning, also practicing. So spending enough time doing it. I'm open to it, yeah. I'm open to, yeah, to, to going back to where I started. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Do you feel like, is there anything that um, you learn from Marcel that you use every day in your daily Mm. life? Mm. I'm trying to think. Uh, Some, well, oh yeah, not to cut corners. (laughs) Not to cut corners, all right. That's a good one, yeah. And I think I feel like patience and also like hard work you put in. Yeah. Robert, yeah. Roberto Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's so very nice. Cesar is one of the best designers and persons I've ever met. Everyone should oh. learn about him. Thank <laughs> you very Roberto. nice. <laughs> yeah. We went to school together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Would you ever take, like, I know you have a mentor like Marcel, and maybe you have some others as well along your way but do you would you think you would ever mentor somebody else that might be looking for 
to get into yeah. the industry? Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 always uh, providing feedback, you know, portfolios, resumes, you know, career career advice. Mm, that's great. I mean, just sharing uh, experiences that I've had, mm -hmm. uh, hoping that it's somewhat helpful to the person I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm you know always open to helping in any way I can. Oh, that's so great. Mm -hmm. do, do you guys ever need uh, interns or is that something that, that's not in your jurisdiction? Uh, just, do, do you feel like you need help sometimes or do you do it all by yourself? I, yes, of, of course, yes. Like, I mean, my goal would be to like do more of what I'm doing now and that entails team extra like hands. Team. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the near future, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, it's not, not, not set in stone. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, there are like interns that come and go. For um, right now, right now, is it just right, you? Right, right, not right now, but I've known in the past, uh, you know, I've you know, met interns and people mm -hmm. that have come to help. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like it's, it's very, I'm not clear in how to proceed or like what the process is like, but yeah, I've, I know we do interns sometimes, like internships right. things sometimes, yeah. Right now, is it just you, got you just, um, are you the only one making the prototype? Uh, in, in my side, yes, right now I'm the only oh, person yeah. hands on, uh, you know, just getting, you know, getting things moving. Yeah. Uh, as much as possible, but yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. only one on site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. Yeah. Are you do you, oh yeah, like do you feel like yeah, it's a long long time coming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you're like in a happy spot right now, you're like tinkering in a way. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that's the case. And um, I'm cutting it a little short, but I feel like I've asked a lot of questions and I that's know good. you're you're actually at work, you know, so I don't want you to get in trouble. And uh, thank you for sharing your journey. Of course. Um, and it really shows how, like, you know, some people say education is, you know, you know, so not out the door, but, you know, you really value what you got from Stad and also with Marcel and um, yeah. really, it's, it's really inspiring. Yeah, yeah, that's very important to, you know, to mention and make clear that it is important to, you know, take the right steps to, you know, to become the designer or, the, you know, the professional you want to be in. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore, you know, the... I mean, people overlook traditional footwear making because they want to do sneakers and they think yeah. that all oh, sneakers has nothing to do with traditional footwear making and they ignore that. But, you know, little do they know is that the sneakers have come from traditional footwear making. Yeah. You know, the yeah. patterns and all of that, it's based on classical designs. Yeah. And the construction and the assembly orders. Mm -hmm. It's all based on classical designs. Mm -hmm. So I think ignoring that step, it would be like ignoring steps, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think you will have a, you will learn the hard way and it will be harder to break into the industry if, if you're missing that knowledge, mm -hmm. because that's what the industry is missing right now is that yeah. knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, you know, you know, people like you or Marcel still keeping the craft alive mm -hmm. are important because, you know, you are the ones who like people are going to come to you to learn mm. the foundations, right? which everyone needs. I think even if you are a designer, you should have those foundations. Yeah, no, I agree. And also, I, I don't think it's separate. Like you say, like even shoe repair, cobbler versus cord wainers, it's different and it's a different craft. But it's good to know that it's all related. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and sneakers as well. It's right now, it seems like sneakers is a totally different world, you know, from bespoke shoemaking or boot making even, you know. 
mm-hmm. like like cowboy boot making it's different right. it's just different but it's still like a very broad well, i think it's the same so yeah it's still within the same ecosystem yeah definitely okay all right all right i'll let you go i feel like okay. you're like someone's like <laughs> looking at you being like are you working <laughs> all right thank okay. you so much thank for taking you. your time all right bye bye